Ah, it's that time of year again. Sleigh bells ring, chestnuts roast on an open fire, and a group of British people shout at each other about video games, all in the name of charity. The Jingle Jam is a yearly period of live streams which raise millions of pounds each year for various charities. There are bundles of games as a sort of incentive for people to donate, which end up being worth much more than the amount needed to donate to get them. During these live streams, you can expect all sorts of stuff, like Jingle Cats, Poker, and the occasional Drunken Lewis Breakdown. But this sort of stuff is much more recent. To really understand Jingle Jam, we need to go way back. Back to 2011. So, in 2011, these live streams weren't called the Jingle Jam yet. In fact, that wouldn't happen until 2014. The first Jingle Jam was actually called Christmas Goat Giving Special, and would raise money for Oxfam's Give a Goat. The streams would last from the 3rd of December up until the 31st of December. There isn't a whole lot of footage, but in total it raised over £60,000. The 2012 streams were called Honeydew's Honey Drive, which raised money for Oxfam's Plan B, along with 365 Emergency Fund, which in total raised over £210,000, which was a huge step up from last year's already impressive total. This was also the year of Sexy B. Lewis, and the live streams lasted the entire month of December. 2013 was the Dwarven Dairy Drive, and from here on I'm not going to name each and every charity that was being donated to because there's tons of them altogether. but this year the total donation amount was over $1,150,000. I'm not entirely sure why they switched to dollars from this point onwards, but my guess is so that the number looks a little bit better maybe. Either way this was a huge amount. This was the first year that people that donated would get games in return via Humble Bundle which, along with the Oxcast's success at the time, would probably be the reason for such a huge jump in donations. So, 2014 was the first official Jingle Jam that called itself the Jingle Jam. In total, it raised over $1.1 million. So, not quite as much as last year, but still an impressive feat. In 2015, the stream schedule was changed up a bit to add a little bit more variety. In total, they raised 1,050,000, which is another small drop, but honestly, I'm not too sure why. There were more games included in the bundle this year, and a stream schedule that looked to be packed with a lot of fun variety, with slots kept open for other popular YouTubers, such as Game Grumps and Boogie. If I were to hazard a guess, it would be that Simon and Lewis had slightly less screen time this year, because of that variety. The donation amounts differ on each day, and the days with no Simon or Lewis loosely tend to be the days that the donations are slightly lower. Either way though, $1 million is nothing to laugh at. 2016 was a great year for Jingle Jam in terms of money raised. In total it was over $2.5 million. After two years of slowly decreasing donation amounts, this year just knocked it right out of the park. This was in part due to the amount of games received in the bundle, almost tripling, and an extra $5 charge being added to the bundle as a whole. The schedule this year was filled with fun events, such as the High Roller Special and a huge group Stellaris stream. As if last year wasn't enough of a huge donation increase, 2017 was the Jingle Jam's biggest ever year, raising a total of $5,245,722. The bundle size was bigger and the streams were as fun as ever. However this year the Yogs weren't all stretched out over the entire schedule. As it had been in the past few years, different people or groups would stream in certain time slots. The difference being in 2017, Yogg Cinema was introduced, where chat would actively vote on what Yogg's cast videos they wanted to watch. There were also dedicated series watch-alongs for things like Shadow of Israfel and Jaffa Factory, which are still fan favourites to this day. This meant that members wouldn't get burnt out from all the streaming and could focus on good quality entertainment during their slots, while at the same time being live for much longer squeezing in a few more donations. It's hard to live up to something which is the best of its kind, but 2018 did a pretty good job with a total of $3.3 million raised. The schedule followed a pretty similar theme to last year's, but kept the York Cinema slots entirely for after 11pm, apart from the 25th and the 26th of December, presumably to give everyone a bit of a break. It was a solid year. 2019 was another good year, 
A total of $2.7 million was raised, and it seemed like the structure of the Jingle Jam was staying pretty consistent, and likely wouldn't need to change up too much in the future. But guess what else happened in 2019? Coronavirus. This would have a pretty heavy impact into Jingle Jam 2020, which would be the first Jingle Jam to only last 14 days, rather than the entire month. And while it's still a huge number amount raised, that year would go down to a bit over $2.1 million. But that had nothing to do with the streams themselves. Looking at the amount earned in the first day, it actually exceeded the first day of the previous year. With only half of the day streamed and a bunch of things becoming more difficult due to Covid, it was incredible that the Jingle Jam was still able to raise over 2 million. So, this brings us back to the present Jingle Jam, 2021. It actually still kept the 14 day schedule like last year, the most likely reasons being that it was much less stress on people like Lewis, who had to manage and arrange everything, and there wasn't as much of a drop off in total donation amounts. It just made sense really to have less days but pack them full of the best streams possible. In total, this year's Jingle Jam raised over $4.4 million, which is absolutely amazing given that it was only over 14 days which makes it the second highest total donation, but actually broke 2017's donation record on its own 14th day. It's possible that if this Jingle Jam had gone on for the entire month, it may have been the highest donation amount in Jingle Jam history. This year, even with Covid stresses still high, was a fantastic year for Jingle Jam. So that's a brief history of the Jingle Jam. I didn't get to watch much of it live this year due to a heavy uni workload in December, but I'm excited for next year's which I'm sure will be just as good, if not better. One of the best things about Jingle Jam is seeing the Yogs have fun, messing about, drinking maybe a little too much. Without Jingle Jam, we'd never find out about a bunch of behind the scenes things, and little bits of interesting old Yogscast trivia. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays everyone, and have a fantastic new year.